Today I'm chatting with digital media expert Patty Keegan, who is founder and director of the company Digital Chameleon. Welcome, Patty. Thanks, Jackie. Great to be here. How did you first become involved in the digital media industry? Um, many years ago, when I started my career in media, I started in magazines. And from the publishing side, I moved to the media agency world where I planned and bought media across um, all media. And at the agency, I guess it really all started when I was assigned with the America Online account uh, back in the US. And this was when AOL had 200,000 subscribers. And in the agency, we didn't even know who they were when they came and asked if we'd represent them. So that was a real eye-opener for me. And the, I guess my claim to fame working on AOL was that I negotiated the um, first deals that AOL did with magazine publishers to polybag their startup discs on top of magazines. So they became known around the country as um, coasters because they were just everywhere. But at the time when we first came up with the idea, it was pretty innovative. And if you think back then, that was before the web. And it was a proprietary network. So you had to have a startup disk, and you had to subscribe. And you were within what's termed a walled garden, where there were content providers who provided the material that the users would um, see and interact with on AOL. And those were deals that were done with magazines and newspapers, media companies. So from there, that really piqued my interest in this new thing. I, I guess I've always kind of liked to start new things and be on the, the edge of what's the next thing. And from there, I went to Ziff Davis Publishing and was part of the launch team for ZDNet. And that was one of the first sites that ran advertising in the US. So that was very interesting because we were manually uh, rotating the ads across the site to make sure that our advertisers got the impression delivery that uh, they'd contracted. We were literally throwing darts up against the wall to figure out what the CPM rates would be. So it was a, a great time to be involved with it. It was really the beginnings of it all. And uh, then from there, I went to CARA, the media buying agency, uh, worked there in the US for about three years. And then there was an opportunity to come to Sydney to start an intera the interactive division of CARA in Australia. So I did that for four years. And when I left CARA, I was approached by the online publishers to help them start the IAB which is the peak industry body for online advertising here in Australia. So while I was doing that part time, I started the business Digital Chameleon. How can marketers benefit from using online as, as a choice of medium? Well, I guess some of the, the uh, capabilities and some of the um, advantages of the medium, one, it's measurable, so it's it's accountable and it's really important that if marketers are going to get involved with it that they should have really specific goals and objectives around what they want to get out of it and then be sure that they're measuring those goals so that they they can measure their return on investment uh, another thing i guess would be the fact that it is interactive so it's a way that companies can connect with their consumers people can order subscriptions or samples, uh, get information um, with some of the advertising um, technologies that are out there. You can capture data within ads. So there's a lot that can be done with this medium that just simply can't be done with other media right now. So it's important to think of online and digital media's unique capabilities and how it fits in and complements the media mix. Mm -hmm. What are the things that brands maybe need to be um, aware of or concerned about when considering looking at online as a marketing op option? Well, 
Well, one of the, the main things that people are talking about right now, there's such a buzz in the market about social media. And I think while marketers are very intrigued by that and they really want to participate in that, they're, they're scared. It's a challenge because it, I like to say, you know, the clowns are running the circus now. The consumers have so much control over when, where, and how they consume media, what they're saying um, about brands, and I think that's really scary territory for brands. You know, and lots of times, you know, in training sessions, we'll hear, "Oh, but I don't want to get involved with Twitter because I'm afraid somebody might say something nasty about our company." Um, and I guess the response there is, "Well, they may be saying something nasty about your company anyway, so better that you are there in that environment and can enter into the conversation." So where do you think we are now in 2010? What, what are we looking, where are we at now, and what are we looking to in the future? Well, I think where we're at now is that digital media, online media, is mainstream. Um, and at this point, online accounts for 16% of all media spend in Australia, um, which is significant. And at this point, we. Australian marketers are spending more online than they are in other media such as magazines, radio, cinema. Uh, we're really number three after free-to-air television and newspaper. So if you look at a market like the UK, they surpassed newspapers a while ago and last year online spending surpassed television. Now granted some of that was probably helped by the fact that TV had a, such a decline um, a lot of that due to the GFC, but it still is an amazing outcome that there's more money spent online in the UK now than there is on television. So uh, we'll see when we get to that point here, um, but it, it has made, um, it's, it's really withstood the GFC. Um, I think probably online and subscription TV fared the best and we had a 17% year-on-year increase in online spend for the first quarter of this year and we're probably slated to reach two billion dollars in online spend in Australia this calendar year so it's it's definitely mainstream and it's mainstream as well in terms of the amount of time that Australians are spending on it. Too. So it's not going to go away? No. <laughs> no, it's not going away. This time it's real. Mm -hmm. The dot-com boom was one thing. This time it's, it's stable and it's much more mature. Do you think everyone should go out and buy an iPad? Oh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, they're saying that uh, that will be the savior of the print media industry. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Right now, it's the uh, the innovators mm -hmm. that are buying. What is it? Six or seven hundred dollars now, and um, so the Australians jumped on, and they've got a digital edition. And I think Fairfax is coming in with the Herald and the Age next. We've got magazines that are looking at doing it. Um, uh, and e-readers, I think uh, w it'll be interesting to see what their place is in the market. You know, how many devices do we need? Um, <laughs> we've got the PC, the TV, the mobile, the iPad. So we'll see where it goes, but um, it's, it's definitely a space to watch. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, you could, this is probably one of the areas that print media, especially newspapers, because newspapers have really been doing it tough through all of this. You know, news has really become a commodity to some extent. And while newspaper audiences are growing online, they're not, you know, they're not charging for that. They're not, they don't get subscription revenue, and the ad revenue that they get online isn't enough to make up for the lost revenue on the print side, so maybe iPad holds the key there for them to get people to pay for content again, news mm -hmm. content. And, you know, Rupert Murdoch's made big news in the industry, and the industry's very, um, you know, it's, it's quite a debate right now as to whether or not websites, now that the horse has been out of the barn for 10 or 15 years, where we are used as consumers to getting all of this information for free, how much and what will we be willing to pay for. So that'll be an interesting evolution.
It will. You're obviously at the forefront of uh, digital media being, being in the training area. How do you keep up to date with what's uh, going to happen next? It must be very difficult. It is. It does yeah. get overwhelming mm. sometimes. But what I try to do is use the tools that are out there. So things like RSS feeds um, so that I'm getting the news coming into me that I'm interested in and that I then can filter out and through Twitter and Facebook and newsletters send out to our attendees and the people who follow us on all of those um, media or mm -hmm. with on those devices. So that's how I try to do it. And in a lot of the sessions, that's what people will say is, how do I keep up to date with all of this? Mm -hmm. So we've got a monthly newsletter, but now we're looking also at having um, a, a news roundup that we'll send out on a more frequent basis just to give people a snapshot of the headlines. Mm -hmm. I'm finding it's almost like being in the monthly magazine business where you know I'm ready to write my newsletter and I know what I'm going to write about but then something just happened last week which changed everything so now I have to rethink my topic so um, if we have something that is more um, frequent that will help people keep more up to date as well. So. Well that's something I'll have to sign up for. Good. Uh, Patty it's been very interesting to talk to you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thank you.